The Square Ball Podcast. Hello there. Welcome to the Phil Hate Monday Club. It's brought to you by the Square Ball and the Athletic. Dan Moylan with you from the Square Ball. Phil Hay is on the line as well from the Athletic. You can get 15% off the big three legal services, Wills, Probate, Conveyancing. Thanks to our sponsors for the show, Levi Solicitors. If you go to levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash Monday Club or quote Monday Club, when you contact Levi's, you will get that extra discount. You can also get your regular 10% off your legal fees on everything else. Uh, legal services for you personally and for your business, levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash Monday Club. Bank holiday Monday Club as it is today, Phil Hay. 15 minutes then to interrogate what happened down at Bournemouth. I'm, I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Here we go then. 15 minutes on the timer. Is there even any point now in dissecting the actual football? I, w- I was thinking this as I was writing after the game yesterday. You know, Bournemouth turned up, Bournemouth scored four goals, Bournemouth leaned on leads, and, and at the moment, leaning on leads seems to be all that you need to do to, to make them crumble um, and, and to make them fall away. I think there were a few kind of um, lasting images from yesterday's game, but the biggest for me was the sight of the players at full time getting slated by the away end and, and looking like they didn't actually know what to do with themselves. They didn't know whether to applaud apologetically. They didn't know whether to contest it a bit. They they just stood and took it and sucked it up because where else is there to go now and, and what else can anybody say? Um, it was just a mess all around. There was very little from Grassi in the press conference afterwards that made you think that he had the answers or had solutions to this. Um, there was the the DM from Radrazani on Twitter describing it as shit, which very much felt like the penny finally dropping, um, as a few people have been telling him for a long time now that, that this season has not been going well. And I can't remember if it was on my podcast or on this one last week, but I think it was mine on, on Thursday, where I said that I felt after Leicester that the damage was done. And I really think that's the case now. I, I struggle to see how they're going to pull together enough points next month to stay up. And I really struggle to see how anybody below them or around them is going to be so bad that they're going to finish on fewer points to keep Leeds in 17th. I don't know. There's some. Uh, there are some bad teams down there. And I know that hope feels like it's evaporated, Phil, but it is the one remaining hope that we've probably got now that somebody else, or well, three teams are worse than us. Well, the miracle in this seems to be that Leeds are still 16th and they probably won't be after tonight um, unless um, unless it just falls falls nicely for them. Um, but I think one way or the other, they'll, they'll drop down to, to 17th. And considering it's been, what, one point from five games, um, it's, it's fairly remarkable. And it does show how, how poor the bottom end of the division is. But they're going to have to take something from next month, um, from from those four games. They will have to dig out points somewhere. And it is so hard to make an argument for it happening. I mean, it's you feel almost like you're watching the same game or, or the same cycles on repeat in that, again, down at Bournemouth, it wasn't as if it was a bad start. You know, Leeds forced the pace early on, um, but then conceded with not quite Bournemouth's first chance, but close enough. And then suddenly 1-0s, 2 nil, And this is a side who just seemed to go from almost looking like it's quite structured and quite oddly to looking like it's in total disarray. And the second half was appalling yesterday and particularly the latter stages of it when, it again, it, it felt as if Bournemouth were scoring four and could have scored six or seven. And, you know, they have you know, they have picked up at the right time, Bournemouth, and, and they're safe now. But they've been fairly mediocre and fairly poor all season. And, and that is exactly the sort of game, a little bit like Fulham away, but I think more so Bournemouth away, that is the sort of game you've got to target if, you, if you're going to stay up and, and if you're going to avoid finishing in the bottom three. And this has been creeping for a little while now. The the the, the way in which it has just imploded for Gracia is staggering, really, and, and remarkable from the position they were in in the first half against Crystal Palace to the position they're in now. And and you just feel as if the, the pessimism that we're feeling on the outside is absolutely coming from the inside. You know, Radrazani describing it as shit, Gracia struggling to to come up with answers. The players' body language at full time yesterday looking like they're absolutely beaten. It's not as if us on the outside are, are being negative and, and downbeat about this. And it's kind of contrasting or conflicting with what's coming from inside the club. The club look beaten. The club look as, as if they think they're in serious trouble. And they should think that they're in serious trouble because they are. I mean, Gracia's shrug and if I'm here 
uh, when answering, you know, can he solve this? That was a, a worrying sign, wasn't it? The, the, the sign of a man who, who doesn't know what to do. And, and you were saying there about at full time, the players are wandering around the pitch, not quite sure where to put themselves. It's all sort of symptomatic of the of the bigger problem, isn't it? There's this, this weird malaise now that's just completely swamped the club. Yeah, it, it was hard to know with that answer from Gracia whether it got slightly lost in translation, whether he was trying to say something different to how it came across in English. But the, the answer was to the question of, do you think the club will stand by you now? It was, it, you know, if I'm here, then I suppose so. And and I don't know whether he meant, well, if I'm here, then yes, because, you know, that's 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 the message. Or whether he, he genuinely meant, well, if I'm here, then I suppose I have to think that, yeah, they do, because otherwise they, they would have sacked me. I mean, I found myself writing after the game, as ridiculous as it sounds, about whether the club will be forced to to kind of spin the wheel again with with the head coach, whether they'll be forced or, or might consider changing Gracia and just a, a final throw of the dice for these four games. Because, I mean, on the one hand, it's no strategy to do that at all. And I think strategies just seem to have completely, completely dissipated this season. But on the other hand, you know, what strategy is it to just let it kind of continue like this? And I, and I guess that's the corner that we've reached is that you you're talking about getting, you know, potentially getting rid of a head coach who, in, in in the grand scheme, it's not gone well for him with the last five games at all. But this, you know, the bigger picture, it's not Gracia's fault. You know, the, the way in which he was parachuted in, in itself, sums up the, the way this season has gone and, and the lack of control that there's been. Um, but what other card can they play at the moment? Which players that they're not using, can they use? Perhaps rooted off the bench, but Nonto started... Um, at Bournemouth as he should have done nice assist for Bamford's goal and and I thought looking at him in the second half he, he had the, the right attitude of somebody who just wanted the ball all the time I was looking at him asking for it constantly but what you started to realise was that he was a guy who was sort of saying I'll try and do this on, on my own I'll try and do it myself but you can't you know he simply can't do that and again this season should not have been left to hang on a player of, of his age it just shouldn't shouldn't have been like that so what else can they do? You know, what, what else could they do apart from roll the dice again and, and go for somebody else? But you could the counter-argument to that is to say, would it make any difference? And is there actually anybody out there who, who at this late stage, would be able to make an impact? Because I'm not convinced. You're talking about, a, well, I was going to say a four-game Hail Mary. It's really, it's a three-game yeah. Hail Mary, isn't it, if you uh, are prepared to exclude Man City? And it can't have, you know, gone unnoticed that today is Javi Gracia's birthday as well. Imagine getting a P45 for your birthday. Well, imagine just having your birthday in these circumstances. I mean, I can't, as you, you you know yourself, as you get older, you think less and less about your birthday and you, you sort of do tend to do less with it. But I can't imagine he'll, he'll be doing anything with his apart from sitting and sitting and stewing. And the problem this week is that even if you were to say, right, you know, let's let's take another swing at the ball. Let's see if, if somebody else can make a difference. What's the first game ahead of you? It's City at the Etihad, um, which just looks like, the, the you know the biggest of nightmares um for a head coach so the chances of making any impression this week um is is limited to the point of being non-existent um they just are in a, a massive fix now where if they get out of this um they'll be extremely lucky and nobody would nobody realistically is going to emerge with much credit from it just returning to Radrizani's um twitter dms to fans that's probably another another symbol of where things have gone wrong. And we can't put ourselves in the shoes of Andrea Rodrizani and, and know what his motivation is. But my personal belief is that he knows what he's doing there and knows that these things will, will end up in the public domain. So why is it being back-channeled to a fan or a, a content creator, whatever you might want to call them, uh, and not being fronted out publicly because it feels like it's taking a step back or just doing it at arm's length, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, whatever your view of... Uh, that being, you know, private message being made public, it's it's reckless to do that if you don't want it to be made public. You know, if, if you're sending that sort of message um, as the, the chairman and majority shareholder at a half a billion pound football club, you, ha you have to accept that that might, that might get out and people might see it and, and draw conclusions from it. And, you know, the conclusion I drew, as I said earlier on this, was that, the you know, the penny's finally dropped, that it's gone horribly wrong this season, having almost gone horribly wrong last season and, and that's the problem really is that I think you can forgive one tough year in the Premier League because the Premier League has the capacity to be extremely difficult and we are finding that out 
But I think a second season like this becomes less forgivable because it doesn't feel as if much of what went on last season has, has taught any lessons. And I mean, there was absolutely no forgiveness in the away end yesterday at all, as, as there wasn't likely to be. Um, but it's just poor. It's poor PR that um, it's, you know, it, it, it doesn't it doesn't really help. Um, and it, it just paints the picture of a club that's fallen apart on the inside. Yeah, kudos to the fans that did travel, which I guess brings us on to uh, the video that's been doing the rounds. That's I suppose it's, yeah. you'd say it's gone viral now of, of the fans being walked straight past by the players who've all got their headphones on, their earphones in, um, in the hotel reception in um, in Bournemouth. And in particular, I guess that the young, the kid who was like waving at the players has, has almost become the, the symbol of the whole thing, hasn't he now? Um, of, of how this feels like a club that has just completely lost its way. Because uh, I, I dare say... I'm not making excuses for the club. Um, I just want to frame it right with context in the sense that footballers generally have their time micromanaged, don't they, by, by the club. There are people there to tell them where to be, at what time, what they need to do, so on and so forth, um, a bit like kids. And um, they may well have been told, you know, this is not time to do autographs and so on and so forth. Get You get out there straight through on the bus, you can do autographs after the game, whenever it might be. Um but that doesn't excuse them completely blanking a kid who stood there waving at no, them, does it? At, at all. That's the point. It's a, it's a really bad look. And I, I, I understand and accept that there are times where footballers definitely need space or where footballers definitely have places to be and have short um, turnarounds where, you know, if you're preparing for a game and you need to be on the bus, you, you need to be on the bus and, and you need to go. But the, the look of walking past um, supporters with headphones in, ignoring them completely, is... It is bad, and 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 it looks it looks worse when the season is going the way it is. You know, supporters who've gone down there, who are at the hotel, at the very least, are just looking for a bit of a high five, bit of a fist bump, particularly the kids. And okay, they're looking for autographs, but I think you're right. You know, you can't if you're trying to get to a game to prepare for it, you can't get delayed by 15, 20 minutes because you you're trying to sign lots of autographs. It can be a difficult balance in in certain moments, and that's probably one of them. Um. But it it does it it just looks it just looks fairly ignorant. Um and I don't know the the this thing of headphones on, heads down, walking past people, it's it's strange. It's like odd way to odd way to be. And I know again athletes try to get in the zone and everything else and, and they do need they do need that space to, to be able to do that. Um but in these circumstances it's just the you know it's just the worst look, isn't it? It does not look great. It aggravates people. It it doesn't make anyone feel any better about what was going on yesterday. Um, and I think the club will absolutely regret the fact that that is out there. Yeah, and and it all shines a light back onto what we had under Bielsa, doesn't it? This is the, uh, the I guess it's a proximity to that that makes what's going on right now look particularly bad. And he always went to great lengths to stress that the support of the fan is number one, is central to this whole experience. So to see players with faces buried in phones, AirPods in, I think it looks really, really bad when you held it up against that example. It was his mantra, always. It was his mantra in Argentina, um, at, at Newell's Old Boys and, and still is, but very much at Leeds as well. And I think the one thing Bielsa understood was that if you take away crowds and you take away supporters, you, you don't have anything left. You know, you what apart from the actual football itself, but there's no spectacle. You know, there's there's nothing round about it. And I think Bielsa was kind of the antithesis of, to take the Manchester City game as an example, you know, the, the shift with two weeks notice to Saturday afternoon from Sunday. And then the suggestion that the Premier League might break the 3pm blackout, I presume to keep your broadcasters happy. But never mind the people who are having to pay more money to change the hotel plans and the flight plans, the travel plans and everything else. Never mind the people who are actually going to the game. You know, never mind the people who make the effort to go into the stadium. We we spoke a lot about this on the, the athletics podcast, you and I, about how the, the value, the game, the overall game's value of match going fans just seems to diminish by the year to the point where sometimes you wonder if clubs would really care you know do, do they even need the income so much from uh, the further down you go the pyramid the further you go down the pyramid the more you need the income from match day receipts and, and everything else but the premier league in particular the cash comes from tv rights you know that that is where the bulk of the money comes from and as i say with bielsa he, he very much had it right in the sense of saying 
if you don't have supporters at these games, then the games are nothing. You know, and that was shown during COVID, empty stadiums where it all echoed round and about. You know, that's kind of what you're what you're asking for, and it's how it should never be. Yeah, your television program looks pretty awful if there are no fans there or the seats are half empty. So I think the clubs will be minded to remember how important fans are in this, even if they're not the biggest source of uh, of income anymore. 30 seconds left, Phil. Where do Leeds United go from here this week? Because it feels like we have hit rock bottom, basically. Well, well there's very little coming out. I mean, I would, we'll wait and see with um, Gracia. Um, as far as Manchester City goes, I, I don't see what, what option there is, but to try and employ damage limitation there and um, get through it and onto the other side and hope that, it, you know, the damage to the league position in the meantime is um is not so bad um but this is going to be a hard week for them um following on from a, a few hard weeks i don't even believe we've got one in us now when it comes to man city <laughs> 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 all right there you go 15 minutes up there's the whistle bank holiday monday edition of the phil hay monday club done and dusted then i don't think we need to say much more do we it, it felt like going into this one we could have probably rattled it off in 15 seconds um something along the lines of everything shit can we go home now yeah, but then then again, there's a lot going on, and there's a lot that needs to be spoken about at the moment. I think, and the the there need to be there need to be consequences for some of this. There, there need to be big decisions made. That there, there need to be changes. Um, I think that was apparent before now, but um, Bournemouth has has really crystallised that fact. Uh, we roll forward another week, and uh, we'll get together towards the back end of the week over on the Phil Hay Show on the Athletic Feed. Thanks for your time again, Phil. Always a pleasure. Likewise. Thanks for joining us on the Monday Club. Uh, don't forget to check out levislisters.co.uk forward slash Monday Club. We'll speak to you later in the week. The Square Ball Podcast. 